Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I am Athena, if this is your first time here. And if you are a returning viewer, then welcome back y'all. So in today's video, I am here to show you all how I make my tote bags from home. I will be showing you all three different methods. One, using the HTV vinyl. Two, using DTF, which is a direct to film. And then my third one here, which is a regular screen print transfer, all right? So if you're interested in this video, then let's get into it. All right, y'all, so we are going to hop into the material that you will need to complete this job, or at least the material I am using to complete my tote bags. Of course, first things first, you will need some type of tote bag. I am using these canvas tote bags from Amazon. I believe they are like 15 by 16 in size. They do come with the handles as well, so I do like these tote bags. Now, the material I am using today, I will be showing you all three different ways. The first way is using HTV vinyl. And the brand that I like to use is the Sizer or Caesar brand, however you choose to pronounce it. And then I also like to use screen print transfers, y'all. This is just like screen printing onto a shirt, except for these are screen printed onto paper um, using plaster salt ink. And then another way that you can do is DTF prints. These are direct to film prints. They are very similar to screen prints. There's no weeding, no cutting. You simply put this onto your bag, heat press for like 15 seconds, and that's it, y'all. So I will be showing you all three different ways today. So y'all already know. Let's move on. Let's get into it. Now, the first material that we are going to start with is going to be the HTV vinyl. And to achieve the finished look that we need, you will need a Cricut machine. This is just an old faithful Cricut maker. This was a gift from my brother. You will need some type of weeding tools. I like to use tweezers, y'all. Let's see if I can show y'all. These are like my needle nose tweezers. And they get really precise and really into the small areas here. So you can use that or you can use this weeding tool as well. I think you can get this thing from like Dollar Tree. And then, of course, you will need some type of heat source. I am using my HTV Runt Auto Press. So, of course, the first thing I need to do is to measure my tote bag so that I can get the correct size for my design. And this tote bag is measuring about 14 and a half in width. And I think I want to make this design, I want to say about nine inches in width. So we will see. Put it into Cricut Design Space and see what the size comes out to be. So I have my design pulled here into Cricut Design Space and I'm going to resize it down to nine and a half. Oh, I think I said nine. So take it down to nine in width and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so basically nine by nine. That's not too bad. So I am going to go ahead and click make it in the upper right side here. And once I get this to my mat, this is what it's going to look like. Now, because this is HTV vinyl, you need to put your mirror on. So you need to mirror the design. So once I mirror the design, you see it flips it here. And once it flips the design, this is what it looks like. Now, what I am using is the everyday iron on setting for my HTV vinyl. So next, what I'm going to do is measure out how much material I need. And again, I know I need to go down to line number 10. I'm just going to take my pen and mark where I need to cut. And then with HTV vinyl, you always want to put the shiny side face down. And you see the little bubbles in it, but I just try to push those out as much as I can. All right, y'all, so the heat press has gotten to the correct temperature. And what I am doing now is just 
pressing out the wrinkles from this tote bag so that I can get a better feel for placing. So I'm just gonna run this in the machine a few times just to kind of get rid of some of the wrinkles. All right, so I think we got most of the wrinkles out. I think I'm gonna keep it on the side because of the handles. So here is my design right here. And so I'm just going to center this design as best as I can. Y'all know I love my ruler. I like to measure everything just to make sure it is centered. All right, y'all, this looks pretty good. But before I press it, I always like to pick up my designs and look at it too. I think that looks pretty good actually. So we have the HTV vinyl on the tote bag and I have it centered. So we're gonna go ahead and press this. And I'm just gonna allow this to cool just a little bit. Don't want to peel it too soon. Okay, so that did pretty good. And then next, I'm just going to do my final press with just regular parchment paper. So I'm just going to cover the design and give it another go. Now, HTV is exactly what it stands for, which is heat transfer vinyl. So you basically need heat to transfer the vinyl onto any type of blank, such as a t-shirt or a bag. You will need a cutting tool, such as a Cricut machine or a silhouette to cut your design. And then also a heat press machine to press it into your item. All right, looking good. And like I was saying before, the wrinkles here, they will fall out over time and over use. So I don't really worry about that. But y'all, it turned out really good. Can't even feel it. So this is the HTV. So next we are going to move on to the screen print and then the DTFs. Now the time and the temperature for my screen prints and my DTFs are a little different. So for my screen print transfers, these will be 325 degrees for seven seconds. And then for my DTFs, these will be 350 degrees for 20 seconds. And then of course the regular HTV vinyl, like I said, this is gonna be 320 for 15 seconds. So you can see the difference in time and temperature with all three products. So next we are going to do the screen print transfer. So I do need to adjust my temperature slightly. So I'm gonna take it up to 325. Get my time and I need to take my time down to seven seconds. Oops, one more. There we go. And then again, screen print transfer. It looks pretty centered. Again, this is going to go for seven seconds. Now, screen print transfers are basically plaster saw ink that is printed onto a special type of paper that is released once heat is applied to it, such as a heat press machine. And I do use these on my sweatshirts, t-shirts, and tote bags, and you can use these on other items as well. Also, you, these can be used on 100% cotton, 100% polyester, and cotton blend. So this is how it turned out, y'all. I can't even feel anything with this screen print. It is really pressed into this tote bag and I love this design. I did create this design myself and this is one of my very first designs that I created when I started my small business. Now my next video, I will be doing kind of a Q&A telling you all a little bit more about myself and how I came to be a small business owner. Um, but this tote bag will be for me. I am an Air Force veteran and I love all things military, y'all. So next let's move on to the DTF print. Y'all, I just turned this tote bag over and I'm just going to put the design on the other side. Now, I do need to change my temperature and time. 
Now the temperature for the DTF is 350. So I'm going to go up to 350 and then the time needs to be 20 seconds. Why do I always go one pass y'all? <laughs> so we're going to let this one catch up to 350 and then we're going to get started with the DTF print. One thing that I wanted to add about DTF prints is that all DTF prints are not the same time and temperature whenever you are using your heat press machine. Um, but this particular one, again, is 350 at 20 seconds. I ordered from a different person who was local, y'all. And I think the temperature for that one was only 330 for 10 seconds. So just please be sure to follow the instructions um, from the individual or the company that you order from. So we are going to get this one as centered as we can. It's pretty centered. Let me see. Yeah, it looks pretty centered. Now I'm going to go ahead and push this in and let it go ahead and start. The direct to film method is basically done by printing the design onto a transfer film. This is then covered by a thermal adhesive powder and then transferred to your item using a heat press machine. And these can also be applied to different fabrics, including polyester. So I bought this one over here to the table just to take it off the heat press machine and to allow it some time to cool down. So we're going to give this about a minute or two to cool down and we're going to peel it. All right, y'all. So this has cooled down. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can start peeling. Okay, so far so good. This is a distressed design. So... There we go. It did try to get my little star right here a little bit, so I had to change angles. So again, I'm going to give this a final press for 15 seconds. So I have changed my, my second press down to 15 seconds. Again, I am using parchment paper. For my second press. Ooh, it's smoking. And there you have it. So here is the final product, y'all. This is what the final thing looks like. Now I will be getting this shipped out today, so we'll be packing the order. This person also ordered like five keychains, y'all. So I will be packing this order and I will be making a separate video about this. So this is the Silly Goose tote bag in green. And this is the second one that I did. I will be keeping this for myself. Again, this side was the screen print transfer. And then this side was just the DTF print. Now I do like all three of these methods and I have my reasons for using each one of them. Of course, I like my DTF prints. I'm able to do full colors for a very inexpensive price. I like my screen prints. I can do them in one color. I can usually get them for under a dollar, sometimes 75 cent. And of course I like my HTV, the vinyl here. I'm able to test out a design to see how it sells before I order more in bulk. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know which method you prefer. Do you prefer the HTV, the DTF, or the screen print? If you've tried any, or maybe what method you're interested in trying, y'all. So that is all that I have for you today. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, all right? Thank you all so much for your support, and I'll catch y'all on the next video.